too, yes. All right. Howdy, everybody. I'm Rochelle, and here's Jamie with Equine Simplified, and we have a special guest today, and that is Karina Kinsler. She is an amazing horse photographer. So we're happy to have her here today. What, why we're doing this is because we have some new functionality with the Equine Simplified app called the Equine Simplified Gallery. And in the gallery, it allows you to upload your photos and videos and it automatically tags them with the horse, the activity, the, um, the date, and any special notes you have. But you can also go back to any photos and videos and add to that people and horse show and other custom tags and such. The reason you want to do this is because then you're not having to search forever to find that one photo amongst your thousands where you're scrolling, scrolling, and you're like, hold on a minute, I gotta find, hold on, I know where it's a close here to kind of find it. And so, because we've all done it, we, you know, and, and then because you can find those photos and videos, you can send sale videos to potential clients. Right. You can send um, vet videos or, or photos to your vet or to your farrier so they can see progress on injuries or rehabilitation. And then you can share it amongst all your friends as well. Right. So it helps my clients too when I send them updated videos of their horses and uh -huh. seeing the progress. So I do love that. Fantastic. So really excited. And so I was talking to Corinda and I was asking her, okay, now that we have this, for amateur photographers like Jamie and me, we want to understand, I mean, amateur, we, we do this with an iPhone, okay? Um, how do we take just exceptional photos? And what are the tips that she has for us? Um, by the way, there's horses in the background, so if you hear them making noises. Um, what are some tips that, that she has for us to take really great photos for the amateur photographer? Yes, I love that. I think like, I scroll through Facebook and I see pictures and I'm like, it's a really pretty horse, but ooh, it doesn't look so hot. <laughs> 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 it makes you cringe. And sometimes it's not just iPhone photos, sometimes they're real camera photos that look like that. So I think it's really important that you know how to take good photos, make your horse look good, and actually show a true representation of what they look like, because it's really easy to just skew things weirdly yeah. with a camera, even if it's just your phone. So I want to make sure that you know, you're showing them truly, you're making sure they look good. And especially if you're taking like sale photos, you know, even if it's just a quick snapshot, you went out to the barn and you grab a horse and you're like, oh, somebody's interested, I need to grab a quick photo, but you don't have them standing right or something right. looks odd, the buyer's gonna be like, ugh. And that, that's, that is, a, it's a quick decision that yeah. they have too, so that it's that one-time decision. So you want to have that wonderful first impression. For sure, yeah. And even things like, you know, if you're taking a photo of like, to track their development or something. They go, they're going to the trainer and you wanna take a before picture and see how they develop. If you have them standing one way in one photo and a different way in another photo, you're gonna look and be like, hmm, something's changed. But in all reality, it's just the photo that you've taken. Right. So you might be sitting there going like, why does that look so weird? So I think it's definitely important to have a process and some things to think about. Um, so I'll kind of share with you all some of my tips um, for that. So excited. Yes. Um, so, and then after we share them, we can kind of show you some of those things what they look like too. And, and by the way, this is Daisy who is going to be photo bombing because she's <laughs> just been, uh, or video bombing, but uh, she's been coming in and out. <laughs> so, uh, one of the first things, and I think this is kind of more obvious, but it's something people struggle with, is get your horse's ears up. Like, getting your horse's ears up makes all the difference and your horse looking gorgeous yeah. and alert versus just like a little donkey sitting there. Um, so some of the things we used to get horses ears up are peppermint wrappers, dog toys, brushes, sand, grass, branches off of trees. Um, just make sure you're getting the horses ears up because it makes all the difference between a dud of a photo and a good photo where the horse looks happy and excited. <laughs> um, so that's my number one thing. I, I had something funny about that um, and another tip, but Dolce, when she did all the hunter breeding, she was you know, great in the ring. She'd find something uh -huh. to focus and her ears were up. Then you take the award photo with the ribbon and her ears were back and they were just like, I'm done. They're not going forward. I'm done. They're back. I'm laid back. We're done. And so one of the grooms had a phone and had um, winning sound. Yes, yes. my friend does that. That works great for that. Yes, yeah. There's even an app called All Ears and you can actually download it on your phone. And if you're taking like a selfie with your horse, you can like play the sound oh while you're taking the selfie. That's great. <laughs> so you're not like trying to take a selfie, like put your ears up. So yes, it's All great. Ears. Um, sometimes it has a reverse effect though, because like I think it has like some stallion noises on it. Oh, okay. And sometimes if you play it around the wrong right. words, they're like, wah. I've seen her 
go pretty wild though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or if you play it in a barn full of horses, all of a sudden the whole barn starts talking back and everyone's like, what's happening? <laughs> so yes, ears are really important. Um, the second thing is make sure your horse is standing square. I was actually talking to a trainer friend the other day about this, like, I was talking about a lot of the sail photos you see coming out of Europe. And I was like, I feel like I see all these photos of horses, she'll send me pictures of horses. And I'm like, I feel like they all look like they're really far stretched out and it makes them look bad. Like it makes their hips look weird and all these things. And I was like, I just don't understand. <laughs> like put the horse's legs underneath them. And I think like you do quarter horses and stuff so you know how important that is. Right. Whereas I think sometimes in the English world, people forget about mm -hmm. the legs. Um, so making sure they're standing square, their feet are underneath them, and also taking into consideration like what type of horse is it? Like a quarter horse stands a little bit more underneath themselves, whereas if you're photographing a saddlebred, they're not going to underneath right. themselves, um, or an Arabian or something. So being aware of what type of horse you're photographing and what they should look like according to the breed is also yeah. really important. And make, making sure that that squareness fits the breed, otherwise yeah. it will look awkward. And yes. also something that I see sometimes is have you ever seen a horse in pictures and you're like, it looks like the horse just has one front leg and one back leg? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so too square, square, but not <laughs> too square. You want to see all four legs or else the horse will look like it has two pegs, okay. um, which is never a good thing. <laughs> so yes, I guess square, but not too square would be the rule. <laughs> okay, okay. Square, but not too square. Um, next would be angles. Um, this is a big thing you see like in the quarter horse world. I think you'll see a lot of people that put the horse's butt towards uh -huh. the camera to make their butts look bigger. So whatever is closest to the camera is going to look bigger. I guess this is kind of something to keep in mind. Also something you can use if you have a horse that might have weird conformation. You can kind of cheat the system a little bit. So if you have a horse that has a really like big shoulder and you want to hide it, just put their hip a little bit closer to the camera. Or if you have a horse with a really like you know, small shoulder and you're like, nah, just move their shoulder a little bit forward. And just taking a little step in the angle is going to make a huge difference in the way the horse looks. Um, so especially if you're like tracking progress on like a training horse, for example, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that when you're taking those shots, you're not skewing your angles or else you're going to have two shots to compare and you're like, really compare these things. How do you keep it from getting where you have that horse's head that just looks huge? And, you know, and I, <laughs> yes. I, I had one horse that had a huge head anyway and yes. kind of a shorter neck. And it, but he just said a huge head. And so it was just, like, every time I took a photo of him, I was like, God, it keeps growing. It's bigger. <laughs> that, so I guess what happens is in the camera, whatever's closest to the camera is going to look the biggest. So if you have a horse with a really big head and the head is straight on towards the camera, close to it, it's going to look real big. It's like those pictures you see, my horse is really goofy and he sticks his nose out when I try to take a picture of him. So every picture it looks like he has this giant nose because it's closest to the camera. So if you just think, okay, don't get the head so close to the camera, that's gonna help, right? Um, the other thing is the reason that happens is because our phones have really wide angle lenses. So they can cover a lot of area really close. That's why we can take really good selfies on our phones, right? But when they do that, it actually stretches what's at the front of the camera, which is okay. why you get this weird distortion, um, which is why you see photos of horses that look like donkeys. Right. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, their ears look so big. It's just what the camera does on your phone. So that's why when you see photographers photographing horses, you'll see these really big long lenses. So when you use a big long lens on a camera, or you can zoom in a little bit on your camera, which will help to some extent, it actually doesn't have that distortion in it, okay. which is why you'll see these pictures. Sometimes if you're looking at it, you'll be like, man, that's a professional photograph, but the horse kind of looks like a donkey. It's because the photographer chose the wrong lens. And so you have to be smart as a professional photographer, what equipment you're using with horses. And sometimes with the phone, it's just hard to so, avoid that. So with that, is it better to stand further back and then zoom? That's what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, if you stand further back, theoretically, if you zoom, it will help a little bit. On a phone, it's not going to be as big of a difference. Okay. Um, but yeah, just it's just kind of the bad part on the phone. If you put your phone on that 0.5 zoom setting, it'll get even worse. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you'll notice, like, you'll put it on that 0.5 <laughs> setting, and you're like, whoa, that looks weird. That's why. It's getting wider, and it's causing their heads to distort. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So ear, or did that, whatever's close to the camera is always bigger and that distortion can be really, really <laughs> troublesome. <Okay. laughs> so be careful if you're photographing your really big eared horse on your phone. Okay. Um, so the next thing is really going to be their necks actually. Um, so 
I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of a horse and they have their neck turned just a little bit and all of a sudden their neck looks really short. Yes. And you're like, man, I thought that horse had a nice long neck. Or you think you've got the perfect photo yes. and then you, because they look cute and great, yes. but then it, they, it's just yeah. distorted. Yeah. So just make sure that they're not turning their neck in a weird way. Or sometimes when they turn their necks, they'll shift their weight in their body. And then they look like they're leaning or they're not straight or their conformation can sometimes look like it's off, but it's really just caused by them shifting their weight, turning their heads. Um, so make sure that you're considering where they're looking in the photo and also like what discipline, because obviously if you're photographing your hunters, you want them to look different than if you're photographing your ranch horses or something like right. that. Like head set to how right. high or... So make sure like, you know, I always say when I photograph my jumpers, if they want to be giraffes, they can be giraffes. That's right. fine, right? <laughs> Nobody cares if your jumper looks like a giraffe. But if you're photographing your hunter no. and all of a sudden you take a tree branch and you're like, put your ears up and your hunter's like, <gasps> <laughs> we look and be like, what did you do to your hunter? That just looked like a hunter. That person in the jumper ring. Right? Right. So make sure you're taking that into consideration, right? Um, where should their heads be? Are their heads turned? That type of thing is really going to be valuable when you're taking these photos, especially the horse photos. Right. Um, nobody's going to want to buy a hunter that looks like it should be running around the jumper ring. <laughs> so that's really important. Um, the next thing is going to be really making sure that you're choosing an area with good lights. Um, our phones do not do well in the dark. They're not that smart, and sometimes you'll get pictures that are weird or hard to see. Um, so be careful of areas that are too dark. Also, be careful of areas that are really splotchy. Um, so if you stand underneath a tree and you look at your arm and you're like, my arm has spots all over it from the sun, if you put your horse under it, your horse is going to look like he's dappled. <laughs> he's really not. So just make sure that wherever you're taking pictures that there's good light, but also make sure the light isn't splotchy or anything like that because it can be weird. Um, kind of a good rule of thumb is to choose like the morning or the evening to take photos. Um, during the middle of the day, sometimes you'll see pictures of horses where it's really bright and sunny and they look real shiny, which can be good for some horses, specifically like the Western disciplines. You see this a lot. They want that really shiny, muscly, you can see the definition, but it can also kind of because sometimes it creates shadows and it makes them look weird and you're like that right. doesn't look strange whereas if you choose like in the evening where the sun has gone down a little bit it's going to be much softer and much prettier to look at there so like today it's you know 11 o'clock or so is it better to do it in a place where it's really shady and yes. trying to find a place like that versus yeah. doing a full you know it's a beautiful sunny day but it may yeah. not be <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful <laughs> sunny day is not always the best for snapping a photo um, but at the same time, if your barn's really dark, you're like, what do I do? So stand at like the edge of the barn. Like if you have a really big barn, okay. put your horse towards the edge of the barn. That way it's a little bit brighter, but you still have a nice soft light that's really pretty and it's gonna make them look flattering as opposed to just being like harsh sunlight. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yes. So I think if you use those tools and kind of like go through a checklist, like, you know, are my horse's ears up? Are they standing square? What does their neck look like? Is this lit well? Those types of things, like make sure nothing's too close or too far from the camera to skew the that. So if you follow those things, you're gonna take good, accurate photos of your horses and make sure that as you're going through and tracking these things in the app, whether it's for training or injuries or whatever it may be, you're gonna know like, okay, these are consistent images that I can go back and compare or I can send to my vet and they're easily able to identify like, oh wow, the top line has changed, what's going on here? Um, Cause I know for me, sometimes I look at my horse and I'm like, was that there last month? I don't remember. Or like, I, I remember showing up at the trainer and being like, where did that bump come from on her back? Was that right. there? And I was like, trying to look through my photos and I was like, I don't, I don't know because I didn't take a good picture of her when I was there to see her top line and to know what that looked like. And if I would have had that, it would have been nice to go back and identify this is what happened. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and that's, that's and what I love about the app too. On the flip know. side, from a trainer's perspective, mm -hmm. you know, to if a client comes and they have those questions, you have the pictures and you know things to show right. where they were. And yeah, I love having that feature. It's a good one. Yeah, I think it's really important and to not have to scroll through the thousands. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> There's and kids and other horses and yeah. yeah. I think too, like the fact that you said you could tag stuff. Yeah. So you can go back and find like, oh, I took a picture of his legs or his feet. 
you know? Well, and I do that. If I see something on a dog or, or I mean, I put my dogs in there too, <laughs> but if I see something there and you want to look at it, and it over time, especially injuries, injuries. and such, I, I do that all the time. I take just obsessive photos of yeah. injuries. I have all kinds of random photos in my, and then I can't delete them. So I like, I, I cannot do it. I, I can't do it. I just can't do it. So I, you know, when you accumulate them. So and then your storage is full. Yeah, exactly. And so this way you can store it all the time. And then, then also when I send you photos or videos, then you know you you actually it doesn't bog down my phone. It doesn't bog down their phone either. Right. Uh, it was funny because Oakley um, he was doing the baby greens last uh, in November, and he had a great round, one of the rounds. But he literally he's never done this. But he stopped in the middle of the round to go to the bathroom. First time he's ever gone to the bathroom with anybody riding him. And Jeff was riding, him and I mean like just to like first jump and just. Put on the brakes, <laughs> you know. Because like going to the deal, they change, they slow down, and slow down. And it was like, no, stop, just gotta go. Yeah. And, and it was the funniest video. But you, when you have so many videos, yeah. how am I gonna find that one video right. again? So now I can tag it and say, you know, pooped in class or whatever, and put that <laughs> comment down there, and now I can find the video. So for the baby of, book. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, the baby photos and other things on there too. So I yeah. Know. I think that's especially like when you go to shows all the time you have all these rounds like what do you do with yeah. all these videos i know like as a photographer like i have to be very diligent about categorizing and organizing my images and keeping them stored and backed up and i think this is another layer like what if you lost your phone exactly what happens to all that stuff yeah at least it's somewhere well, you didn't it, it, I, well and i backed up on my computer i backed up on clouds I've, and then i can't find them from all these <laughs> yeah. different places either so that's my right. problem that i have with yeah. So this was one of those it solved a problem personally for me right. that I think would be useful for other people too. Definitely, <laughs> I think so for sure. So, but yeah, thank you. And, and what we're gonna do is, if you don't mind, yeah. we'll take one of these horses yeah. and we'll just kind of play with it for a little sure. bit and model it. I'll show some things we'll see. to do, not to do. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So that would be great. Yes. Okay.